Hey, what is up, awesome people? This is Shady Wags with Got Your Back Gaming, and I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on how to get started in Worlds Adrift. Worlds Adrift is currently in early access on Steam, and at the time I'm doing this guide, the game is in version 0.2. 0.3 so it may be slightly different when you begin to play the game while the game itself is amazing and i highly recommend it there's not much of a tutorial at this time so hopefully i'm going to be able to clearly explain how to get started in the game up to the point that you built your first ship and you're able to fly it after creating your character you're going to start inside of a temple on a random island and the very first thing you want to do is press the number four key to equip the scanner then you want to aim at the glowing design and then hit the left mouse button to fire the scanner at the design. This will award you with some knowledge points. And our main goal in the beginning is to get the 50 knowledge points so we can learn shipbuilding. And anytime you want to check how much knowledge you have accrued, you can hit the tab key. Then click the knowledge tab and the amount of knowledge you have will be in the left hand corner. So go ahead and hit the tab key again and that's going to close the screen. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to climb out of this room. So I'm going to aim up at the ceiling above that glowing design and I'm going to fire my grappling hook with the right mouse button. Then I'm going to hold the left shift key to reel myself up and then I'm going to hit the right mouse button again to detach the grappling hook. Next I need to make my way safely down to the ground below and the easiest way to do this is to fire the grappling hook at the wall by hitting the right mouse button again. Now I'll step off the side and then hit left control to reel myself down and then hit the right mouse button again to detach the grappling hook. It could possibly do a little bit of damage but it's better than falling all the way down and dying. Now I'm going to make my way around the island, scanning all the objects. Almost every item on the island is going to give you some knowledge, including rocks, trees, and even bugs. These will generally give you around one to five points of knowledge. There are going to be items that are left by ancient civilizations, and those are the items that we are looking for because those award 25 knowledge points each. If you come to an area that is too steep to walk up, you can use your grappling hook to pull yourself up and you can also climb by hitting the Q button. Now by exploring the island, you should be able to obtain 50 knowledge, which is what you need to learn shipbuilding. If you're unable to locate enough items on the island and that could happen, then you're going to need to make your way to another island. And you can do that either by asking in chat if there's someone who can fly you to another island or what you can do is revive at a random revival chamber. Now in order to revive at a random revival chamber, you're going to have to kill yourself. So to die, the easiest way to do that is just jump off the side of the island and then you're going to fall to your death. And then you're going to select revive at a random revival chamber. Different islands will have different layouts. They have different types of trees, different types of metals, structures, and caves. So while one island may be small and not have much on it, another could be gigantic and loaded with tons of different items. Now, once you have gained 50 knowledge, hit the tab button and then select the knowledge tab. Click on shipbuilding, then select okay to confirm. You'll now acquire a list of schematics of items which you can build, and we can view those items by clicking on the schematics tab. The first item we're interested in building right now is the assembly station. This is like a crafting bench. If we click on the assembly station schematic, we can see that it requires 100 total metal. Metal is mined out of rock nodes that look like this, and once you break them open, they may contain metal and atlas crystals. So to mine, I'm going to hit the one key on my keyboard to equip the salvage tool, aim at the rock, and then hold down the left mouse button to begin breaking the rock to see if there is metal inside. And rocks may contain different types of metals. Just be careful also when you're mining that the metal does not break off and roll away as you may have to chase it down. Or it could just roll off the side of the island and be lost forever. If there is a glowing crystal inside, that is an atlas crystal, you're going to need that for later. 
So to pick them up, highlight them and then hit E. The metal and the atlas crystals that you collect will appear here in your inventory. If you die, the items that are stored here will be dropped to the ground in a bag which is lootable by other people. The items that are stored here in your belt will not be dropped on death. So any items you want to keep, make sure to drag them to your belt. You do have limited storage space, but you can rotate items to make them fit by holding the right mouse button to drag the item and then clicking the left mouse button to rotate it. Once you've collected 100 metal, hit the tab button, select schematics, and highlight the assembly station. Now drag the metal to each one of the three boxes to allocate metal to them. Once the three boxes have been filled with the required amount of metal, a craft button will appear. Go ahead and hit that craft button and the assembly station will be crafted and placed into your inventory. Now drag the assembly station down to your hot bar. Hit the hot bar key that you drag the assembly station to and then hold the left mouse button down to place the item. You can now interact with the assembly station by hitting the E button. And this is where you're going to build your ship parts. The next item you want to build is the shipyard. So hit the tab button, select schematics, and click on the shipyard. Again, drag metal to each of the three boxes. The shipyard requires 160 metal, so if you don't have that, you may have to go collect more. Once you have enough metal and you've drugged that to each one of the three boxes, hit the craft button. Same as the assembly station, move it to your hot bar, hit the hot bar button, and then hold the left mouse button down to place it. Now we're gonna hit E to interact with the shipyard. You're going to notice that the shipyard does not have an owner yet. So we're going to select the ship schematic that we would like to build. I'm going to go ahead and select the dinghy. Once the schematic is selected, the shipyard will now be owned by me, but it's still not active. So in order to activate the shipyard, I need to craft the ship's frame. I will move the metal to the two slots on the frame, then hit craft, and the ship's frame is built and the shipyard is now active. Once the shipyard is activated, it'll put a force field over top of it and everything underneath that force field is protected. So your ship, you and any supplies you have underneath that force field is protected from people attacking or destroying it. Now the next item I want to build is a personal reviver. So if I do happen to die, I'll be able to respawn back at this location. I'm going to open the assembly station, click on the basics and then personal reviver. And it's going to take 100 metal to craft a reviver. So you may have to go out again and collect even more metal. Once you have the 100 metal that is required, drag it to each of the two boxes and click on the craft button. Once the crafting is completed, the reviver will be placed on top of the assembly station and is now ready to be placed on my ship. I'm going to hit the number three on my keyboard to select the shipbuilding tool and I will left click on the reviver. Now I want to move up to the top of my ship's frame and to do that, I'm going to shoot the grappling hook to the top of the force field, reel myself up and drop down on the ship's deck. Now I'll place down the reviver on the deck of the ship and then I'm going to hit E to register myself to the reviver. 
Now that you've registered at the Reviver, if you die, you can revive back at the personal Reviver. Now while you've been out exploring and collecting materials, you may have taken damage to your health. And in order to restore that, you need to eat berries. So to collect berries, I'm going to hit 1 to equip the salvage tool, and I'll begin salvaging a tree. Just be careful that the trees do not fall on you as it can kill you. As I continue salvaging this tree, I'm going to collect wood and berries. I'll then hit the tab to open my inventory, drag the berries to the hotbar, then I'm going to hit the hotbar key and now hold in the left mouse button to eat a berry and restore some health. Eating one berry will restore some health over time. Now that my health is back up to full, I'm going to continue salvaging metal and wood so I can complete the ship and leave this island so I can get more knowledge. Knowledge is needed to unlock additional ship schematics like wings and engines, so we're going to need to explore different islands and scan items to collect that knowledge. We also may be able to find schematics and items in chests that you're going to discover on islands as well. So to complete the ship, we need a helm, a sail, and a sky core. So go back to the assembly station and craft the helm using 140 metal. If you're in a situation that you cannot locate any rock nodes, there are normally nodes underneath the island itself. It can be tricky getting to them, but by using your grappling hook and by climbing, you can reach them. So once I've crafted the helm, I'm going to hit 3 to equip the shipbuilding tool and grapple to the top of the ship and place it down. The helm is the ship's steering wheel and that is required to maneuver the ship around. Next, I'm going to build the Atlas Sky Core, which requires 140 metal and one Atlas Shard. The Sky Core is required to lift the ship off the ground. Make sure to stand back from the assembly station when crafting large items like the Sky Core because they can fall on you and actually kill you. Once that is crafted, now place the Sky Core on the ship using the shipbuilding tool. And the last thing we're going to need is a sail, and we're going to need a 200 wood to craft that. Once the sail's down, our ship is completed. Well, it's at its bare minimum. You can craft additional storage, you can attach panels, you can put all types of different things on this thing, but I wouldn't at this point because there's a pretty good chance you might lose the ship. The ships are hard to control until you get the hang of them. And you might see many ships just floating out in the middle of nowhere or crash down on the ground. And that's most likely because the person didn't know how to control it. They jumped on the helm and they lost control and probably crashed the ship just as fast as they crafted it. So I'm going to give you some tips to help you out. First off, don't raise the sail right now. If you raise the sail at the beginning without having a feel for the ship's controls, it's going to take off very quickly and crash into something or it will take off towards the edge of the map. And if it hits the edge of the map, it will begin taking damage and it's going to become undrivable. So leave the sail down for now. First, you need to start the Atlas Core so the ship can take off. And to do that, you need to have an Atlas Shard in your inventory. If you have an Atlas Shard, you want to hold E on the Atlas Sky Core and it will activate. Once it is active, now you can fly the ship. Don't interact with the core again, especially while you're in flight because it'll send out a pulse that will knock you off the ship. So now that the core is active, go ahead and take control of the helm. Spacebar will raise the ship and control will lower the ship. And you can see what direction you're going up or down by looking at this meter right here. So go ahead and raise the ship up until you're clear of any obstacles in the area. A and D will turn the ship left and right. So go ahead and begin turning your ship until you locate another island that you want to travel to. And that is really the only controls you're worried about right now. They are the only controls that work on a ship that is only using sails. There are additional ship controls, but those controls only work if you're using an engine. W and S control the throttle. W is forward. The more notches up, the faster you're going to go. And S will be in reverse. And the more notches down, the faster you'll go in reverse. The red mark in the middle is neutral. And if you use the mouse, that's going to control the ship's roll pitch and yaw. Pushing the wheel forward will point the nose down. Pulling the wheel back will pull the nose up. 
Left will tilt to the left and right to the right. But those are only if you're using an engine. So for now on this sailing ship, we're just going to use space to go up, control to go down, and A and D to turn left and right. Once you've raised the ship up above any obstructions in the area with the space bar, and you've turned it to face an island with the A and D keys, leave the helm by pressing E. And then what you want to do is unfurl the sail, and the ship will begin to move forward. You have no control over the speed on a sailing ship. You're pretty much at the mercy of the wind because there's no way to raise the sail up to half mast. Although you can make a sailing ship go faster by adding additional sails. At any time you feel like you're losing control, like you're going too fast or you're heading in the wrong direction, put the sail down to stop the ship. That way you can reset so you can adjust your altitude or you can adjust your direction. The wind also may begin to push you in the opposite direction, so you're going to need to counteract that by using the A and D key to turn, and also by using the space bar and control key to control your altitude. Like in this situation right here, even though I'm trying to go to the left, my ship is being pushed to the right. So all I need to do actually is just lower my altitude, and then I'm able to straighten my ship out. Once you approach an island, you're going to want to dock the ship at a shipyard. If you see a shipyard and it's abandoned and it's undamaged, when you approach it, the ship will automatically dock there. Once you locate a shipyard, what you want to do is lower the sail, then hit control to lower the ship down near it. If it is damaged, the ship won't dock there, but what you can do is you can equip the repair tool, and if you have the correct metal in your inventory, you can repair the shipyard, and once it's completely repaired, hit E to interact with the shipyard to claim it, and the ship will automatically dock. Another way you can very easily dock your ship is you can build a new shipyard underneath it or near it. Once you've built it, place it down, and the ship will automatically dock. Probably the toughest part about um, controlling a ship that's just being powered just by sails is that you have no control over the speed, especially in situations where you need to go just a short distance. In order to move short distances on the sailing ship, what you want to do is raise the sail, then immediately lower it back down again. Another thing that you can do is you can actually attach your grappling hook to the ship and you can drag it to where you want to move it to. Don't get discouraged if you crash the ship or even lose the ship. This is just a disposable ship. Our main goal with this was just to get to another island so we can get more knowledge. And you can easily build another dinghy if you lose it. So now I'm at the new island. I'm going to begin exploring, scanning items, and collecting knowledge so I can learn new schematics and continue adding new items to the ship. I hope this video helps you out in getting started in Worlds Adrift. If you found this video useful, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Shady Wags got your back. It's so entertaining. You need to subscribe to get your back. Gaming, gameplay, and reviews. Even doing walkthroughs. This the best gaming channel. I'm just telling you the truth. PS4, Xbox One, or even PC. Plenty tips, all the tricks. This is just what you need.